So the idea behind this concept is you have two goods that you are deciding to consume between and you want to optimize your consumption for a given amount of money. So you have a certain budget and you're going to buy a certain quantity of these two goods and you want to maximize your utility. So your utility is just a measure of you know, how much satisfaction or how much well-being you're getting, just an arbitrary measure that you're just creating for yourself. Um, you can't compare these numbers between people. You can just use your own scale for this utility. It's just a conceptual tool to think about consumption. So this is just an arbitrary scale that you would just create for yourself. So you'd have to be given some utility information. Um, suppose you'd be, you were given this information. You'd also um, be given the prices. And so um, this is just telling me that the more that I increase my consumption of potato chips, um, the more utility I get, and this is just how much extra utility. So I can go from this to talk about marginal utilities. Suppose I was just given this information, this is all I need. I can get marginal utility from this, because how much extra utility do I get from one more unit? Well, the first one gives me 20, second one gives me an extra 16 for a total of 36, and so on. So once I have this information, I'm going to be able to optimize, given that I know how much uh, each of these costs. So I'm just, you know, $4, whatever the, the unit is for each of these. Um, and so these are the two goods that I'm choosing between. So we can go from this and create, so suppose you might be given this for a question because you can just create the extra information that you need here. So I might go from this to saying, okay, the, let's get the marginal utility for each of these units. And notice I put in between the numbers here just to make it clear what unit we're talking about. So the first unit gives me an extra 20, the second unit gives me an extra 16. So this way, if I put it right next to it, it might not be clear whether I mean from zero to one or one to two. So this way it's clear if I just um, go halfway in between the two. So second unit gives me 16 extra utils for a total of 36 and so on. And I did the same thing here. So generally we're, we assume that a good is gonna give you diminishing marginal utility. You know, I get a lot of benefit from the first one, the second unit, you know, now that I've eaten the first one, gives me a little bit less utility, so the margin utility is falling, we have diminishing margin utility. So generally that's what we assume as we're consuming more of a particular good. And the same thing over here in cookies, just the numbers are a little different. So again, it's ar arbitrary scale, but I should be consistent between, you know, my own scale for these, for these two goods. So this gives me 16 units uh, margin utility for the first unit, um, another 12 for the second unit, and so on. Now to optimize, I'm going to want to know, uh, I'm going to want to use this price information. So if I'm getting more utility over here, more marginal utility from potatoes, but potatoes, uh, potato chips cost twice as much, I want to take that into account. So basically, you know, I want to get the most bang for my buck. I want to optimize my consumption given my budget and given these two prices. So that's what marginal utility per dollar allows me to do. So I'm just going to take into account, okay, get 20 utils, 20 extra utils um, from the first unit of potato chips going coming from zero, um, but it costs $4. So how much marginal utility per dollar am I getting? I'm just dividing that by the price and I can just create this extra column here, marginal utility per dollar, and just do the same thing over here. And then to optimize, I want to compare these two ratios. So margin utility per dollar in one good versus the margin utility per dollar in the other good. And so if I start consuming, so let's say I'm going to, I'm going to show an example in a second, but let's say I have uh, 20 bucks to spend and I start um, buying cookies here while well, the first two dollars that I spend gives me eight utils over here, margin utility per dollar of eight. And then if I kept, you know, buy the second unit gives me another six per dollar. Um, and the next one 450. So if I went here and bought that third unit of cookies, well, I'm getting 4.450, 4.5 margin utility per dollar, but I could have gone over here in potato chips and done better, right? So if I, if I have some combination of these two goods and they're not equal, that means that I could be doing better because here, if I kept going with cookies, well, I could get, be getting more bang for the buck over here in potato chips, even though it's cost twice as much, but the first unit, taking into account the price gives me five utils per dollar. So if I shouldn't keep going here, if I can do better in terms of margin utility per dollar over here. So um, if these are unequal, then that's telling me as long as I can afford to, to keep going, then um, I should be doing in, I should be switching to the one that has a bigger value, right? Because if I have margin utility per dollar over here is bigger than this, and that's like the more bang for the buck over here in potato chips, I should be moving towards potato chips. And as you move towards potato chips, marginal utility uh, declines, which means marginal utility per dollar declines. That's going to move these towards equality. 
right? So if I have a bigger ratio here and I start moving towards that good, that ratio is going to start to fall because I start to move this way. And if I'm moving away from cookies, then I'm going this way, this starts to rise. So you can see this, this uh, is going to move towards equality, right? So let's look at a quick example. So let's say I got 20 bucks to spend. And usually in these, if you get a question like this, the number is going to work out nicely here. So I can see if I just created a, a column of margin utility per dollar and did, did the same thing over here, you can see, okay, this one's going to be three, this one's going to be three. A lot of times, you know, I can tell right away where this is going to work out. Um, but if you want, so, so I can, you know, check that and see, okay, you just want to check if I spent all my 20 bucks there to see if that's an optimal point. So it could be that I, that I can't afford that point. Um, get, depending on my budget, in which case I have to, you know, just go back and try to uh, find find a, a point that I can afford. But one thing you could do is, if you wanted to uh, to really check if you're optimizing, is to just go one at a time and start spending your 20 bucks. So let's say um, the first. So notice the margin utility per dollar here is first higher over here in cookies than it is in potato chips. So so the first thing I want to buy with my 20 bucks. Is let's go buy cookies. Well, that costs two bucks per unit, right? So I'm going to spend two bucks first cookie, two bucks I've spent so far. I can just keep doing that, right? So notice next one six. Well, my other option is go over here and get five. This is still higher. I'm going to buy the second cookie. I've now spent four bucks, right? So if you just keep doing that and just keep buying the one that's higher, you will optimize based on your budget. Um, now you might have a case where you can't get them exactly equal, but as long as I just keep going and buy the bigger one, that's the best I can do. So it might be the best that I can do is to get as close to equality as possible. So here, um, now after I bought these first two two units, you know now I want to go over here because this is 450, this is five, right? This is now better. So I'm going to go over and buy my first uh, potato chip here. And since that costs four bucks, I'm just keeping track of my spending. So this is kind of a long way to do it if, if I don't want, if I don't see right away, you know, check if that's an optimal point over here. Um, I just keep spending my money, right? So this is five, right? I'm going to go back over here and get this one, which gives me 450 margin utility per dollar. And that's another two bucks. I'm just keeping track of my spending. Then I'm going to go back over here. So now we have three. This one's bigger. I'm going to go back over here and buy unit two over here, spend another four bucks, right? Now notice after that, now I'm at three and three. Um, so it wouldn't matter if I if I did it this way, which one I did first. Um, so let's go back over here and buy cookies for another two bucks. And now I'm going to go back. If I have money left over, I have another four bucks left over. Then I'm going to go buy that third unit. Remember, this is the third unit here um, of potato chips. So now I've optimized. And because the numbers worked out nicely, I got them to be exactly equal. Um, if, for example, I had um, a budget of $14, then I would stop here, right? I ran out of money here, um, and I didn't get them to be exactly equal. So, but that's the best I can do with my uh, with my $14. So that's basically the idea of margin utility per dollar. Um, you'll see this also show up in another context if you are choosing between using capital or labor in your production process then it's the same idea as I add another unit of capital. In this case, I'm looking at marginal product instead of marginal utility, but, but the concept is, is the same idea because the first unit of capital for a given you know, other resources allows me to produce a certain number of goods, the marginal product, the extra units of output that I can produce, and I'm gonna have diminishing marginal product. So other things being equal, add another unit of capital is basically gonna be the same idea. Marginal product is gonna be falling and the same thing over here in labor. And so, which is the best deal if I if I'm able to switch between capital and labor, I want to look at marginal product per dollar, right? Marginal product of capital. So K is traditionally the abbreviation for capital. Um, so it's just marginal product per dollar, right? And it's the same idea. You're optimizing um, by using this kind of ratio. So the concept is is pretty much exactly the same.